Okay, well, first of all, I want to welcome everyone again. I'm very happy to see everyone so abundant present here from the vertical farming industry to visit our opening today um, of the Field Lab Vertical Farming location, both in our research facility at Delphi and here at uh, the Wageningen Business Unit. Um, I'm Lisanne Meulendijks and I work as a specialist vertical farming at Delphi. And today I'd like to introduce you um, into some theory and also share results from the experiments that we have been performing at our research facility that some of you this uh, earlier today have, uh, have visited. Um, and I'd like to stress the topic of challenges that are related to scaling up plant production from an R&D scale to a large commercial vertical farm. Um, but before doing that, I briefly introduced the Delphi Improvement Center, as that hasn't happened yet today. Um, but the Delphi Improvement Center was established exactly 15 years uh, ago, um, here together with also 15 years ago the Wageningen Business Unit. And um, in the Delphi Improvement Center, we focus on developing applic uh, applied cultivation knowledge for old uh, for plant sectors. Um, and some of you have just seen it. It's a large greenhouse facility with also our vertical farming research facility based there. And what we try to do there is translate science developed in a more re uh, research setting like this one of, uh, of Wageningen University into practical cultivation knowledge that can be applied in large scale vertical farms. And for this, we have our vertical farming research facility, uh, which uh, consists of um, the multi-layer unit that some of you just have visited, uh, which is a, a four-story, five-meter tall uh, research unit, and also a single-layer unit uh, in which we're currently growing uh, a tomato crop. And these results, of, um, these units serve to develop knowledge that we can directly implement in large-scale farms. This has already been touched upon briefly in the morning, but I do would like to repeat it. Um, the Delphi Improvement Center has a strong participative role in the field lab vertical farming, um, where together with the parties that were mentioned this morning as well, um, we cooperate and uh, work together on knowledge development for uh, vertical farming. And we're particularly active in the work packages that relate to doing research demonstration as we've done today and also the education aspect by providing internship opportunities and research opportunities in our units um, and it's very great to have uh, so many also officials present here at the official opening of the field lab vertical farming um, here today I'd like to show some results of uh, the comparison trial that was also this morning briefly touched upon and in the field lab uh, in work package two, we are running so-called comparison trials where we research the, uh, the research question that each vertical farm is unique. And what we try to um, actually phrase and bring the discussion up in, in the industry is that the technical design of the vertical farm has a huge impact on the final crop result. And you hear many people talk about so-called growing recipes that could be translated and used all across the globe. But the growing recipe is actually very vertical farm dependent. And what we did in these comparison trials is we agreed upon the different parties that participated that we would grow under exactly the same climate strategy, same irrigation strategy, and the same lighting strategy. And we started all with the same varieties, everything during the growing period was exactly the same. And then we monitored the climate um, in the room and we also monitored the end result of, of the crop. And without going into too much detail, what we clearly see here on, the, on this slide is that among the four different locations that we performed this trial at, there were huge differences in crop result plant height, fresh weight, and the division of the fresh weight between the stems and the leaves. And that's really the message we want to stress with this trial. It does strongly depend on the technical design of the vertical farm, how your crop result uh, will be. And um, Monique shared quickly this picture this morning as well. This is, yeah, 
the proof of uh, visual proof of, of that indeed it looks very different uh, from the different locations uh, where the crop was uh, coming from. But what I think is very interesting to understand better and crucial to understand better to bring this vertical farming industry further is to understand why does that happen? Where do these differences come from? And what we see is that when you monitor the climate inside a growing room, um, it's not just the macro climate at room level um, that is determining the crop growth. Um, in the image above, you can see that in the climate computer, we set, for example, a recipe uh, at 28 degrees. In the room itself, actually, a higher temperature was measured, and inside the canopy, the temperature is much lower. And I'll go a bit into the theory how that is possible and would like to stress uh, why it's so important to actually monitor growing conditions close to the crop. So to understand a bit the differences that we see in the comparison trials that are performed in the field lab, we have to dig into this. Um, setting a growing recipe happens in the climate computer of uh, the growing room unit, um, and that growing room unit then translated into the air handling unit uh, uh, set points. But what we see is that there is a difference between that climate at room level and the climate in between the crop. And that is because the crop itself has a huge impact on the climate on the room. So the crop transpires water from its leaves, and that transpiration process of the crop cools down the air directly around the leaves and, of course, increases the humidity around the leaves. And that means that the growing conditions around the crop are likely to be much warmer, uh, cooler and moist uh, if you measure that inside the canopy compared to what we're actually steering on outside, namely at room level. That is crucial because in the end, the temperature that the plant feels is determining the growth success or the conditions that the plant feels directly around its, its, uh, its leaves. And so in the end, the, grow, the, the growing conditions in that microclimate will determine whether or not the, the, the plant uh, will grow perfect or not. Um, and yeah, it's therefore always very important to understand that there is this difference between the climate at room level and macro level. But it's also difficult because the deviation of um, while the crop grows, that difference between macro and microclimate also changes because the plant gets a higher leaf area, starts to transpire more, and therefore starts to influence more its own environment. So it's a very dynamic process. And what is another technical point to stress, what is important to realize when growing inside a commercial vertical farm, uh, especially for growers um, that are used to grow in a greenhouse, is that the energy balance inside a growing room of a vertical farm is very different from the energy balance in a greenhouse. Um, and that specifically relates to the amount of radiation energy that enters uh, inside the room and hits uh, the leaf. Without going into too much detail, but it's important that energy is supplied to the leaf to allow transpiration to happen from the leaf itself. Um, but the energy input in a vertical farm uh, coming from radiation is very roughly, and depending on, on the conditions, but about one-tenth of the radiation energy input from a greenhouse. The other source of energy that can be supplied to the leaf um, is convection. And um, it's very important in a vertical farm that we focus on that convection way of supplying energy to the leaf. Because the other uh, part, namely the radiation, is rather limited. And that makes a, a link between the importance of a good technical design and being a good grower having good agronomy practices. Because what you want in a vertical farm is that you supply energy to the crop via, con via convection. Um, and what we see, many vertical farms have issues, uh, plant quality issues that relate to tip burn. 
And Tiburn is actually a sign that there was an issue with the sap flow of the crop. And the sap flow of the crop, again, depends on how much energy is supplied to the crop. So without making it too complex, what is crucial is to understand whether there is energy supplied to the crop to enable sap flow and to uh, avoid um, plant quality issues like tip burn. And exactly that is what makes it very challenging to scale up uh, plant production inside a vertical farm because it's relatively easy to create uh, a climate over a small um, growing area of one square meter. But once you start stacking layers on top of each other with relatively uh, little space between the layers, um, it becomes more complex. And what you aim for in a commercial size farm is that you have a homogeneous airflow over the crop and um, uh, supply that energy to the crop in a homogeneous way. Because if you don't do that in a homogeneous way, the crop results will also be non-homogeneous. Um, but it's tricky in a large vertical farm, because besides having the technical challenges of creating a homogeneous airflow, you also need to take into account combating natural processes. So, um, for example, warm air that rises uh, naturally, but also it's a bit counterintuitive, but um, moist air uh, also rises. And so the mechanical system needs to count, combat that natural uh, air movements. And so for this, we need to do crop research. And uh, that's what we're doing uh, in this field lab, vertical farming. Um, and it's very important to, uh, besides looking at the crop itself, we're also monitoring a lot of with sensors, both sensors that can measure the growing conditions directly around the crop, um, but also sensors that are measuring the plant response itself. So sensors that um, can tell us something back about how the plant is feeling. And we do that by placing several types of sensors in between the crop. We're measuring, the, for example, the leaf temperature of the crop, um, but we measure also stem thickness, both of lettuce in this case, uh, but also of the tomatoes. Um, and in our research, we try to understand how the growing conditions that we measure directly around the leaf impact that plant response that we're then measuring um, on leaf level. And that results in a lot of data. And I won't go into the graphs, but I just wanted to show that um, our crop research is also really a research that dives into data and is data driven in a way. Um, and so we're trying to understand what's happening at every single minute of the day in the growing recipes um, with the crops. And we're very glad that due to the um, field lab, we're also able to do this in high wire crops. Um, some of you might have seen it uh, earlier today, but we have this single layer um, uh, unit, which is about 70 square meters, relatively large for such a research facility. Um, where we're measuring high, yeah, we're currently growing high wire crops, uh, tomato you see behind me. Um, this unit is developed, um, built with a, with a uh, dynamic lighting system, beautiful picture here on the, on the right, which is giving us a lot of flexibility to understand the effect of different light treatments um, on the crop. And also in this tomato trial, we're measuring a lot of, uh, of characteristics of the growing conditions and of the plant itself. We have, for example, sap flow meters. We measure the moisture content in EC in the slab. We measure oxygen inside the slab, the photosynthesis efficiency. The whole room is full with sensors, and we really tra try to translate crop results into something measurable and then scale that up to, uh, to commercial farms. And I'd like to show this picture quickly Again, without going into too much detail, but it was great that thanks to the sensors, we actually found out that in the beginning of, of um, our tomato trial, we were committing a somewhat of an error in our growing strategy, which was daily coming back. And it was very, really on the minute exact, we could see where things went wrong. And thanks to these sensors, we could then um, improve the strategy and avoid yeah, this error. So to wrap up, I think it's important to stress the importance 
of measuring what's happening directly around the crop, measuring what is happening with the crop itself, to be able to scale up vertical farming from R&D scale to, uh, to, to commercial scale. I'm very happy to be given that opportunity thanks to, uh, to the field lab. For any questions, I don't know if we have time now, but I would also be happy to answer them uh, via my email. So thanks. Thank you.